The second set of tablets of stone, I'm reading out of my Thomas Nelson uh, study Bible. Chapter 10, Book of Deuteronomy. And for those that welcome, those that are going to hear this down the road, but more so my faithful brothers and sisters that in and out of our prayer group show up from different areas, and the people that help me with the co-hosting right now, very grateful so I can keep my eyes and my heart inclined to the Word of God right now. And Father, I pray that I would give some utterance and I would speak your word and I would be passionate about your love for all of us sometimes. Because when everything in our lives fail, we can come before you and cry out, help me, Lord Jesus. Father, help me. Get me through what I'm going through. And that's for every one of us. You know, we rescheduled my son's birthday dinner to the weekend because he's been sick. His birthday's tomorrow. You'll get him through that. And, and Father, I got war on the saints tomorrow night. You know how important that journey's been for me helping other people recognize the devil and understanding as we study the book a little more each time we study it. So I want to give you the glory this morning, and I want to read your word and help me do some of the pronunciations, Father. I ask that in Jesus' name. Chapter 10, first verse, and that you guys have ears to hear today. At that time, the Lord said unto me, You the two tablets of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. Now, remember what happened. He got so angry at the Israelites, Moses broke the original tablets. So God's being patient with all of us, you know. He's being paid. God's patient with us. It's, it shows it right here. Because how many times do we fall short of the glory of God and God still loves us? He loves us so much that he teaches us to forgive seven times seven. That's 490 times. I really don't know anybody in the world that I've had to forgive that many times yet. So I got to keep forgiving. And that's a good way to look at it. You know, that in fact, the fear of the Lord, because if we don't forgive someone, God doesn't forgive us. That's scripture. So that just shows you how much God loves his creation. And he says here in verse two, and I will write on the tablets, the words that were on the first tablets, which thou breakest and thou shall put them in the ark. You know, and this is the whole beginning in, in, in the Jewish existence going into the promised land. And then that's why they had the Ark of the Covenant. That's why, you know, they even made a movie about this in modern times. Everybody's looking for the Ark. Everybody's looking for the commandments. But reality, he says, I will write on the tablet words that were in the first tablets, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and you two tablets of stone, like unto the first, and went up unto the mount, having the two tablets in mine hand. So they weren't big. You know, I was, I was researching in some of the commentaries, because they, they were in his hand. So it wasn't like uh, gravestones or big marble things or anything. It was just a couple of tablets, you know, and I get a hoot out of that because I see the, the Hasidic Jews today with them tied to their wrist in a little black box. And it's kind of really amazing how a couple of thousand years back or thousands of years back, they, they were really believing God, you know, and that's, that's traditionally played down, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Jewish people, as we know, are really about telling the children and the children's children, and we see that, and we pray for that all the time, 
that our children would be taught about Jesus Christ, the Messiah today, and how, how it grieves all of us that we're in a generation where there's really no God being taught in the schools, no God in a lot of families. A lot of people think Jesus is a fable, and he's the living God. He's the creator of all things. Everything was made by him and for him, and nothing exists that he didn't make. So, I mean, and here we are, we're delving backwards to try to understand what went wrong. So let me continue to read here. Verse 4. And he wrote on the tablets, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spoke unto you in the mount, out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. So Moses is re reiterating, and he's talking about everything that they've already been through. And he's just sitting there gently reminding the people, I want to bring you back to memory lane. And, and this is a good thing for all of us. The more we hear the word of God, the more we hear about God giving Moses the commandments, they're, they're not abolished. We're, we're, we're to live our life according to God's will, his mindset, his heart. And, and, and I get out of this whole thing, forgiveness, 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 we all get upset with people, but we got to let go of it. I can be a good example. We all suffer rejection from people that we have respect for. And, and can you imagine how much, how God feels who created us in his image? And we hear about him and we walk away. My God, my God. You know, I always think about that. When Jesus was saying, why hast thou forsaken me? And God himself, Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So there's so many promises that we can't let the devil steal everything out of our hearts, brothers and sisters. Let's look a little closer. You know, he said, the Lord gave them unto me, Moses said, and I turned myself and I came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark, which I had made. And there they be as the Lord commanded me. So Moses was divinely called and divinely coming into obedience to God's word. And all we got to do is ask him every day to help us. Help us speak his word. Help us to use the word to correct us, to take captive thoughts from the enemy's camp that would want us to uh, be contrary or rebel against what God wants us all to do from God's heart to our hearts. It's just like being a little child. When our parents tell, you, tell us not to do something, we should think about it before we do it. Well, that's the way it is with God. You know, he doesn't force feed anybody. He gives everybody a, a little head with a brain. That's the way he created us. And he said, choose this day whom we're going to serve. So every day, his mercy's new the, the, when you first wake up or when you go to bed at night. All he wants is communication. All he wants is for us to examine ourselves daily and then take up that cross and follow them, you know, follow the word of God. And, you know, back in the beginning here, it was a simple uh, way of following. It became more intense as we continue to read in the Old Testament. And that's why God brought us to where he has us all today. God had to finally do something about the whole thing. And he gave us his only begotten son. And, and he, he simplified it by saying it's a gift from him, and he called it grace. So let's move on. The journey continues. Remember, they came out of bondage. They're going into the promised land now. Everything is starting to come in. And, and they had obstacles in that, as we've been reading. 
the children of Israel took their journey from Beeroth of the children of Jachin to Moserah. There Aaron died. So there's Moses' brother. He's going to die now. And there he was buried. And Eleazar, his son, ministered in the priest office in his stead. In other words, stepped up to the plate. You know, it's, it's quite different today. Sometimes today, the sons are totally different than the fathers, and we're going to see that throughout the Old Testament, that the enemy gets in, the enemy infiltrates. But here, Eleazar, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his stead, verse 7. From thence they journeyed into Gajgoda, and from Gajgoda to jo Jobath, a land of rivers of waters. And at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to hear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to do what? To bless his name unto this day. And we were kind of doing that this morning. We were singing about Jesus this morning. You know, the blood song, it was all about the blood. It was the blood that saved us. It was the blood that cleanses us. Nothing but the blood. It took a, an atonement one time for everyone to believe it. It isn't a daily sacrifice as they were doing in the Old Testament. But the grace of God did come down. And that's how much God loves us. He made the gospel so simple that all we got to do is believe in our heart, confess with our lips, and, and God honors that. You, 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 have a chill, you have a child come to you weeping and crying and, and saying, forgive me, I won't do it anymore. And then he, and God gives us the illustration of seven times 70. How many times do we get hurt by people all the time? Sometimes we get hurt by the people we love the most. And it's devastating. But God loves us more, brothers and sisters. That's why we have the Word of God. The Word of God is, is our instruction book when we're born again. Verse 9, wherefore Levi had no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance. Look at that, verse 9. Wherefore, Levi had no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord has become his inheritance. We're never alone. We have Christ Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit within us dwelling. The kingdom of God is within us. We have such a relationship with the one that created us if we would only focus on it sometimes according as the Lord thy God promised him. And I stayed in the mount according to the first time, reminding everybody Moses spent 40 days, 40 nights, and the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. So Moses' prayers were powerful. Why? Because he was being obedient to the will of God. He didn't argue with God. He said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He did exactly what God was telling him. Boy, sometimes in the world, we're all a far cry away from being an obedient servant. And that's a challenge. That's like the ice bucket challenge. You know, more and more as I'm getting older, I challenge myself, Lord, are, are you pleased with me today? Are you pleased with what I've been doing? And then I tell them, help me get it straightened out. Help me to be more like you, more of Jesus, less of Charlie. And that's a battle because there's an old nature. There's an old everybody in all of us fighting to get back into the house, fighting to take over again. And it's a spiritual walk. And, and when you get into the spirit, you learn to walk in the Spirit and, and recognize how the enemy is working on all of us in and through even people. 
Remember, these are evil spirits. You can't see them. And they go in and out of people at will. You know, if you're an open door, people come and go. Well, same thing with spirits. If, you're, if you don't have stability, you're not grounded in the Word of God. You're not putting the Word of God into practice in your life and saying what Jesus says to all of us. He said it here to the Israelites, trust and obey with all your heart. You're going to see it in this chapter. He says, let, let me read 10. I stayed, he says, I stayed in the mount according to the first time, 40 days, 40 nights. The Lord hearkened unto him, Moses, at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. So they were on the verge of God destroying them. Now, when you, when you really understand this and you look at history and you look at the Bible from the beginning to the end and the flood, and then the, the, the second time around, it's going to be by fire. That's why a lot of people are saying Armageddon is next door right now, and this world's going to be consumed, and God's going to do it by fire. Well, we, there's one faction involved here. If brothers and sisters would be in unity and bind it loose and really start praying, if my people would humble themselves and pray, God would give everybody a break that the, our baby children and our grandchildren and all these things would not come upon them. And we could push this thing a little further down because God Almighty is in charge of everything, people. Don't ever forget that. We can pass the ammunition and there can be another generation because God is a God of love and mercy, you know? And the Lord said unto me, arise, take thy journey before the people that they may go in and possess the land. Well, if we're crying out to God and we're obeying God, he's going to give us the desire of our heart. That's real time today. We're not living back there. We're getting illustration from back there right now as I'm reading this chapter. Which And most, most preachers and stuff today, they're not passionate. They're cut and dry. There's a lot of people that just want to control. There's a lot of narcissism in the body of Christ today. And, you know, I'm only learning because my wife simply got a book that shows all the different things of narcissism throughout the Bible. So I look at this, and they may go in and possess the land, which I swore, because God swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, we have that same blessing today if we would hearken under the hearing the word of God right now, you know? When the bridegroom's not with them, my people will pray and fast. And as I shared with someone the other day, it's a spiritual discipline, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Most Christians do not study the Bible. They go sit in a church, and they listen to whatever that person on the pulpit is saying. And if that person's not preaching it, you're never going to hear it, because you're not reading your Bibles. So let's go back to this. God gave requirements here. Verse 12, and now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Wow, that's pretty strong. All God requires of all of us. It's right here in 12. He says, what does thy Lord God require of thee, but to what? Fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to what? Love him. Well, I was saying, I love you, I love you, I love you to God this morning. And most people think I'm silly when I sing those kind of worship songs. But I, I read this this morning, and it said, But to fear the Lord, thy God, have reverence, to walk in all his ways. Don't we try to do that? That's why we're here listening to the word of God. And to love him and serve the Lord with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Well, that should be your 
your theme song every morning when you get up. And I got up and I was like, wow, thank you, Lord, because I was up at 1.30 and I was praying. I was praying about God giving me favor with what I'm teaching, God growing a ministry for his honor and glory, that God would give all of us wisdom to win souls, lead people to Christ, to get our families in order. How can you get God's house in order if you don't have your own families in order? And I have issues with that. I read my Bible. I get convicted. So we have to we have to minister the gospel to everyone that's close to us. Give them the opportunity. And if they reject you, oh, well, your own enemies are going to be in your own house. Just keep praying for them. You don't have to beat them up. Pray for them. We win the battles in the secret places, people. And what does it say here in 13? To keep the commandments of the Lord, his statutes, which I command you this day, for thy good. In other words, if we're submitting to the word of God and doing what it's going to be good for us. That's what God's word is saying here this morning. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God. The earth also with all that is there in it. You got to believe what we're reading right now. God created everything. He's in control. Okay, 14 says, behold, the heaven, the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God, and the earth also with all that is in. And then it says, only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. A lot of us didn't know people beyond in our family lines, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people of its day, as it is this day is the proper grammar here in the King James this morning. And what does he say here? You know, my little little grandson was circumcised the other day at the hospital before he came home, second day. Circumcised, therefore, what? The foreskin of your heart goes a little deeper than the, the Jewish circumcision here. This is Old Testament, and God's bringing up our hearts here. Get your hearts right with God, brothers and sisters, and be no more stiff-necked, stubborn, narcissist, prideful. Be humble. Be meek. Let your yea be a yea and your nay be a nay. And, and, and we have to put to bed a lot of things that we're all guilty of. When I read this stuff, I get so convicted. I just looked at my wife this morning when we were going over, because some of that stuff that, that that writer wrote exposes all of us people that we're not really listening to the Word of God every time we murmur, every time we complain, you know? I meet very few people in my life right now that passed the litmus test of God's Word, and that includes myself. You know, I, I got to let the potter take this earth and clay. Remember, we're, we're made out of dirt, and he's got to change us from the inside out. For the Lord your God is the God of gods, it says, and he's the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. So he's not a respecter of people. You know what? God respects those that hear his voice and follow him. I mean, it's, it's amazing when you sit here and, you know, there's only 22 verses we're looking at today. He does execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow. This has got, it's so power packed. The fatherless are the orphans, the widows are the widows. Fast forward to the New Testament, and that's the religion, that's the walk that God blesses is when we pay attention to the Word of God, and that's a confirmation that the religion that God sees as pure is taking care of orphans and widows and turning mothers away from abortions, because 
that produces those babies. I mean, there's so much here, so much truth from the Old into the New Testament. What a meditation of the heart that is to read this for me this morning in front of all of you. And here, with this whole crisis, people murmur about the aliens coming into the country, and yet the Word of God says, loveth the stranger and giving him food and raiment. And this country right now is giving people, not every one of them is a communist coming in. You go live in a, a, another country for a number of years, you'll kiss the ground of the United States when you come back into this country. I've done that already. You know, there's something about this country that's different than a lot of countries. That's why people from all over are trying to get here. There was a thing on the news, my wife said, even the Chinese are trying to get into America. I mean, it's crazy. But it's biblical when you look at the writing today. Why? Verse 19, love ye therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. If that don't hit a litmus test in my heart today, yeah, because I... I, I've been really upset about what's going on with everything, you know, but you don't know who's a believer and who doesn't. The only one that knows is God, and the earth is not our home. We're, you know, Colossians says we're to fix our hearts on things above. So many people fix their hearts on things of planet earth right now, and that includes Christians. Thou shalt what? Verse 20. Fear the Lord thy God, him shall thou serve. Well, are, there's a lip. Are you getting up and really serving God or are you serving self? Because this tells us that we should fear the Lord and shall thou serve, and to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name. Well, if you're swearing by the name of Jesus, how can you keep having fellowship with darkness? Maybe if you separate and come out from amongst them, it might bring some people to repentance why you're not talking to them anymore. I always coined the phrase, I don't want to go to heaven without you. I love you, but you don't love our God. You don't love the creator. And people make crazy remarks to me. Well, you don't know God. My God's my God. No, it's the same God for everybody. There's one God, Lord of Lords, God of Gods. And you got to believe that in your heart or you're not saved. There's a lot of unsaved people. That's my point as I'm reading. God should be our praise, verse 21. You know, let me read 20 and go into 21 again one more time. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. What is that telling us? Him shall thou serve. To him shall thy cleave. Cleave means hold on to. And swear by his name in the name of Jesus. You know, I pulled that whole thing up that we did. And Steve put it together and, you know, all the names and, and so many. even. Even someone tried to correct me, and I'm not going to name names anymore, but they need to grow up. It's not an Old Testament name. We're in the New Testament, and it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth that died on the cross for our sins, period. And, and they, they, in the New Testament, says, cast them out in Jesus's name. Can't be any more clearer than that. Here. He is thy praise. Well, that's what I was doing this morning at, at a few minutes. Ernie was here with me, and and uh, Kelly came in, and I made Kelly a co-host this morning. And, and you know what? If people are, are not here, I'm not going to get upset about it because I'm not living someone else's life. This has always been my little devotion for many years now. Nobody came to me and said, 
oh, let's start a prayer group. I decided one morning, and I was at HBC, I said, if this is going to rattle Satan's chains, I want to do things that are going to make the enemy mad. And this is my time of disciplining Charles J. Costello into sitting here and have a little audience talking about Jesus. I'm not talking about every other name that everybody's given him now, because then you'd have to go down a whole list. Prince of Peace, the Great I Am, the Lion of Judah. But some people are so thinking they're smarter than everybody else, and they got it all. And God's a spirit. Just worship him in spirit. Obey his word. You know, his, he is your praise. He says, he is thy praise. He's the God that had done for thee these great and terrible things. He's allowed both things to go on, which thy eyes have seen. Because remember something, they were in bondage, serious slavery, okay? And Moses, called by God, was chosen by God. And yet the people murmured against Moses. And here we see Aaron leaves the situation and his son takes over his position as a priest today. Closing verse today. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten, seventy. And now the Lord thy God had made thee as the stars of heaven for a multitude. And, and that's why, you know, when we get to, you get to Revelation, you can understand that there's a multitude of believers at the end of the book that no man can count. That's, you know, I look at this stuff sometimes and I study into it. And the God's requirement was to be circumcised, and it stands today. He said to the Israelites, with the foreskin of your heart, and, and, and it, it, he commands it here, he says, and be no more stiff-necked. An uncircumcised heart is one that's closed and impervious to God's incoming, just as an uncircumcised ear, Jeremiah 6.10 is one that hears imperfectly being covered over and uncircumcised lips, or lips that speak incoherently because they are sealed wholly or in a part. If that which hinders is cut away, there will be a submission to the will of God and the end of their stubbornness. You know, and... and and someone that's stiff neck is forever arguing, forever debating, very prideful. And, and you know what? I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that ever again. And that's one of the things that in studying the last couple of weeks, it came into my heart that God's changing me. And I sing that song, I Will Never Be the Same. It's from victory to victory as God takes us. We're all sinners, and then he begins to clean us from the inside out. Certainly, the Old Testament went beyond the physical to the spiritual. And if you go to the spiritual, I'm going to give you three scriptures out of the commentary today. I'm talking to Thomas Nelson's study Bible commentary. The only one here that's got one that I know of is Ernie. Romans 9, 2, 29, Philippians 3, 3, Colossians 2, 11. In the same sense as the New Testament, let me read that one more time so people in their study time can look it up. Romans chapter 2, verse 29, Philippians 3, 3, Colossians 2, verse 11. In the same sense as the New Testament, fatherless, the items mentioned are not unique to Israel's God. And, and you know, I, I sit here, and I, I, I brought it out about the widows and the orphans today, but in Deuteronomy and other parts of the Old Testament, Israel was urged to show kindness in the Old Testament to such people, 
Well, in the New Testament, that's the religion that God the Father sees as pure and spotless. Coming into commentary this morning, Moses balanced the two important themes of the law in the first 11 verses. And love from 12 to 22 is about our love for people. God loves his people. He gives them the word to nourish and guide them. We cannot fully experience God's love for us unless we're obedient to God's will. The will of God is an expression of love from God. Psalm 33, 11. David coined it there. There's no question that God loves his people. You look at 15 and 16 and 17 and 18 today. He has stated clearly in his word and has proved it in many ways, especially today in giving his son for us for the sins of the whole world, Romans 5, verse 6. We should love God and prove it by being obedient in service and in worship. If we love God, we will also love others. So you got to get rid of the arguments. You got to get rid of the unforgiveness, brothers and sisters. God wants us to write his word on our hearts and make it a part of our inner person. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. If you love the word, you meditate on it daily. Hear that? If you love the word, you meditate on it daily. You don't have to be in the MOS prayer group to, to meditate on God's word. Just open your Bible. Can you not watch with me one hour? I've been preaching this for years. I'm, I'm sitting at God's feet every day because I need to sit at God's feet. I don't need the devil taking me down rabbit trails. I don't need the devil making me go to movies, watch TV, listen to crazy music, or do things that are contrary to God's word. If you're in the word, you're going to walk in the spirit, brothers and sisters. Even if you're in a workplace, I teach people, submit your plans before the Lord, and you will succeed. And watch out if you do everything the word says, because if you give God the first fruits, he just continues opening doors in people's lives. I, I can't tell you how grateful I am that I, 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 I landed on my feet and I'm walking in God's word because I don't deserve what God has been doing for me. And yesterday, I had such a wonderful time with my bride. And yeah, my bride. I've been married to that woman for 35 years. And we're really getting more spiritual as we get older. You know, the Spirit will perform this wonderful work and transform our lives if we learn to circumcise, you know to take our hearts and turn them over to God. And, and Moses said in his prayer, Israel belongs to God. So when we bind and loose every day, we're praying for the world. We're praying for forgiveness. We're praying that people would come to the saving knowledge so that they wouldn't lose their lives, but they would have everlasting life. He will not destroy them because of their sin, but graciously give them again. He brought them down the second tablets, you know, the law, God's commandments. There are great spiritual lessons today for all of us. As Levi was the priestly tribe, so today the church is the kingdom of priests. We're a royal priesthood, each and every. Every one of us is called to minister the Word of God, to tell people about Jesus. That is, every believer in Jesus Christ is a priest. The New Testament says we are a royal priesthood. I am not a Roman Catholic priest, but I'm a priest forever in the order of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow.
big wow on that. In a sense, all the word Catholic means is general. You know, all these Orthodox groups, they're all their own groups. And it's so sad because they're not one faith, one spirit, one accord. I've been around all of them. And if you don't do it the way they say to do it, you're not part of them. It's the same thing with the Baptists. It's the same thing with the Assembly of Gods. Everybody's got their own little book. And, and a lot of these Protestant churches have their own prayer books. What about the Word of God? <laughs> God gives us a common denominator in the Word. We're his children. We're a royal priesthood. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I know you get tired of hearing me say it, but I'm not the only preacher that preaches that. I wish they would preach more of that in all these deliverance camps, in plain English. I, I'm taking the word deliverance out of the vocabulary in my own life right now, because if you're about one thing, you're not, you're not about the whole word of God, you're, you're, you're a little lopsided, because it wasn't the whole ministry of Jesus Christ. We're to go out and save. We're, the, the greatest miracle we have is to lead someone to Christ. Once saved, they're saved. They got an everlasting. There's no guarantee with the enemy and fighting the enemy, or they wouldn't have wrote booklets saying, hold your deliverance. See, that's when you got to do your part. But when, when you get saved, it's because of what God did. So I think the greatest miracle is eternal life. And, and the signs and wonders we can be deceived, all of us, and we can be puffed up with pride, okay? And when he blessed them, it was a temporal blessing back then. Notice that the tribe of Levi was to have no material inheritance. Far cry from the world today. Christians fight over inheritance amongst their own families. Something wrong with all this, people. God was their inheritance. God had promised to give them the land, a certain amount of acreage to the other tribes. And when he blessed them, it was temporal. He did not promise that to Levi or the Levi. This is also the position of us as believers today. Like the Levi, our inheritance is in God. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. Not to make the mistake of thinking that this is the gospel. It is not the gospel. You and I ought to thank God for that because it's depended on this. You and I wouldn't be blessed very much. You know, it says here, God said today in verse 13, keep the commandments of the Lord, his statutes, which I command you this day for your own good. If Israel had kept them, they wouldn't have, they would have been, if they kept them, listen to what he's saying here, the commentator, they would have been blessed. Same way with us. If we hear God's word and follow him, there's a blessing. When they broke them, in other words, sinned against, contrary against God's word, judgment came upon them. God, for 1,500 years, demonstrated through Israel to the world, and to you and me, that he cannot save people by the law. These people, under favorable circumstances, were unable to keep it. And if they were unable to keep it, then you and I are unable to keep it. Thank God he saves by grace today. In fact, grace has always been his method. In the Old Testament, he never saved anyone by the law. They were saved by his mercy and grace. To them looking forward to the coming of Christ, to die on the cross, to take away their sins. I, I mean, what a landing for me to study this this morning and for other people to hear it when I put it up on the internet. God loved the stranger. He reminded these people that they had been strangers in the land of Egypt. And finally, the Lord Jesus quoted this to answer the devil, Satan. You remember this. O oh Lord, 
certainly was familiar with this book of Deuteronomy, as probably every Israelite in the world is today. And I got to turn the page here. They're stuck together. And, and the last thing it says in this writing this morning that I'm taking out of a commentary, the evident blessing of God was upon them. He sent them down to Egypt. He brought them out of Egypt. And guess what? God's in control. Uh, we, we always quote Proverbs 3. God was responsible, and he didn't mind taking that responsibility. So if you heard this message today and you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, ask him to come into your heart. He will. He'll, he'll do a circumcision. He'll change you from heartbeat to heartbeat, day to day, and just get up and walk with the king, and God will put a smile on your face. If you take that leap of faith and trust them, God bless everybody today. Amen.